You ever meet that guy that knows everything? I mean, he's an expert on sports, on cars, on carpentry, on making chili. I mean, there's like nothing this guy hasn't ever done. I think we got a couple of them dudes up in this office right now. Well, we're going to show you something today that I guarantee you none of your friends have ever seen. And it's brought to you by our friends at FWC's Trophy Catch Program. And that something is called electro fishing. It's freaking wild. You're going to have to check it out. Let's go. So from the outside looking in, electrofishing could look a little alarming to bystanders because there are gonna be fish flipping at the surface and they're gonna lay at their side. They'll be temporarily immobilized. As soon as we net the fish from the water or we stop the electrical current, then they almost instantaneously resume normal behavior. And honestly, I wish we had a little bit better name for it because it sounds somewhat torturous, but really, it's, uh, it's a safe and non-lethal way to collect fish in fresh water. Yeah, it really just should be called like stun fishing or something. It's not like they're on death row or anything. They're, they're completely harmless what we're doing, you know, just measuring the fish, weighing them and throwing them right back. It doesn't harm the fish, it doesn't kill them. So we only temporarily stun the fish. We're able to collect them and get the information and data that we need from them and then safely return them back to the same place from which we caught them. So how this works is the generator, that actually produces the electricity that we are used to shock the fish. And so what, what it does is it brings electricity into this you know, specialized box right here, and this is called an electrofishing box. And then we're able to dial in the, the wattage, voltage, and amperage to a certain depth so it's, it's highly effective at collecting the fish, but also is, is harmless to those fish when, when we shock them. And then once that electricity goes from this, it goes into what we call the booms, and these booms are on either side of the boat and we bring those out into the water and the electricity is, is brought into the droppers of those booms and, and, and actually goes into the water that way. So the number one safety is, is when the generator's on is just don't touch the water. There's a good amount of electricity going in. Um, so yeah, that's definitely the number one uh, safety. So what we use to dip the fish out of the, uh, once they're temporarily stunned, is uh, we use this fiberglass dip net. And so it's insulated, so it actually protects us from, from the electricity. So the electrofishing setup actually has a few safety things, you know, in this. Is Number one, it's got this emergency shutoff switch, so if anything happens, we can just flip it off and it's, it, it turns off the electricity. Another thing, and probably the most important thing, is this foot pedal down here. And so whenever the generator's on, this, this pedal actually controls the electricity that goes into the water. So it only stuns the fish around, you know, goes only down to about six feet in depth. And it really only about you know 20 feet on either side of the boom. When the electricity goes into the water, it depends on you know certain different species, you know, and different sizes of fish can affect how fast those come up. Some come up right away, um, some take a little bit, and also water temperature plays into it. You know, on the colder days, it, it seems like they come uh, up slower, where you know in the warmer days it seems like it comes up faster. But um, you know, it really can depend. But sometimes it's immediate. Once the fish comes to the surface, what we do is we take these long dip nets and we dip them up and put them into this aerated live well. And then once the sample is, is complete, we stop the boat, stop the uh, generator, and we uh, go to the shore usually, and then we measure the fish. We want to make sure that the scale is you know, not bouncing around, we're getting accurate weights. So if it's, if it's calm, we'll go out here, but otherwise we'll be tucked up next to the shore. So it's not all about length and weight. One of the things that we do check these fish for are for any obvious sores or lesions or parasites and there's nothing that would nothing at all remarkable about this fish it's a very healthy fish so these uh, fish health codes have been another component that have been recently added to our fish monitoring and it just gives us another index of how healthy our fish are So today we've already determined the, the spots that we're going to go to through uh, a GIS process where we map the shoreline and go through and randomly pick places around the lake that are going to be very representative of the habitat here. We usually sample twice a year. We sample in the fall to assess the community to where we're dipping up all the different fish and then we come back in the springtime and we do sampling on our largemouth bass so where we're dipping the largemouth bass and, and monitoring the, the bass population. So what's interesting about some of these Florida lakes that have drastic water level changes is 
during times of drought when the lake subsides, people build fences out into the lake and graze their cattle out in the lake bottom. One of the things that is a really good telltale sign of whether or not there's gonna be a lot of fish around is the, the kind of habitat, and in Florida, that's gonna be aquatic plants. Lots of good native aquatic plants are eelgrass, a mating cane, lotus, stuff that you can see above the water, and you know even the submerged stuff, or maybe even more so the, the submerged stuff below the surface is great habitat for bass. Well, people are usually pretty curious about what we're up to. So, yeah, we get a lot of questions like, you know, what are you doing? Uh, you know, how are you affecting the fish? And then once we, you know, kind of clue them in on what's going on, people are generally pretty happy to see us out there and they want to know more about the, the water that they live on or that they use or interact with. And it makes them happy to know that their resources are healthy. You know, I'm, a, I'm an angler myself and, you know, I think it, it, it's just really cool to be out in the water all the time, being able to study the fish and see what's going on in these resources. It just really is, uh, excites me. And so it's, it's really fascinating to, to be a fish biologist, really cool. We've collected information on hundreds of fish, lots of information on the habitat. We've seen miles of water. And what is really satisfying at the end of the day is when your hands are bleeding and you're scuffed up from touching so many fish. You know, we got skinned up knuckles and we get stuck by fish spines and we get some bass thumb. That's a, that's a good day. Just not quite big enough for a tag, but what a beautiful fish. There right, you go, we'll see you next time.